Hi, good morning. So today we'll just discuss something called as glycogen storage disorder type 1. Type 1 which is also called as von Gerke's disease. Some people call it as von Gerke's disease. This topic should be a pediatric topic which will have very strong backing from biochemistry which actually contributes to inborn errors of metabolism. So remember glycogen storage diseases tell you that there is something wrong with the storage of glycogen in the liver, kidney or intestines. And we have many types of glycogen storage disorders. The one we are discussing today would be GSD type 1. It will be ultra short. If at all you want me to repeat something, you can just replay the video and make it as short as possible. Think about what is exactly wrong with GSD type 1. The defect is in the enzyme called as glucose 6-phosphatase. First, what is the use or what is the role of glucose 6-phosphatase in metabolism? Glucose 6-phosphatase is the last step in gluconeogenesis. If you take gluconeogenesis as the reversal of glycolysis, then the first step of glycolysis called as hexokinase has been replaced as the last step of gluconeogenesis with the help of enzyme called as glucose 6-phosphatase. Also remember, Glycogen should be broke down into smaller pieces in the form of glucose. When glycogen is broken down, it becomes glucose 1-phosphate that gets isomerized to become glucose 6-phosphate. That should be broken by glucose 6-phosphatase to deliver glucose. So remember, in both gluconeogenesis and also glycogenolysis, glucose 6-phosphatase is the key enzyme which breaks glucose 6-phosphate into glucose. Because this enzyme is absent, you will not be able to produce glucose. So, when a patient is not in a position to consume glucose from outside, that is, if there is no exogenous carbohydrate intake, then endogenous formation of glucose with the help of gluconeogenesis and the endogenous release of glucose through glycogenolysis is failing because of which patients will have severe fasting hypoglycemia, point number one. So I have given you two reasons for why hypoglycemia happens, failure of gluconeogenesis and the failure of glycogenolysis. Next, if at all the glucose is not formed from pyruvate, then pyruvate will shunt towards lactic acid formation. Lactic acid, if it increases, it is one of the methods by which it tries to supply energy to the brain and other important tissues. So when lactic acid accumulates and the concentration rises more than normal, you suffer from lactic acidosis. Lactic acidosis can actually lead, be a cause of metabolic acidosis where the pH of the body falls. Next, if lactic acid has to be pushed out of the body when it becomes an excess, you have to target the kidney areas to understand what is happening. In the kidney, lactic acid should be excreted, but you can't just throw it away. You just can't deliver it outside your body. So what do you do? You make a compromise. For throwing lactic acid, for every lactic acid molecule, you re-exchange it by reabsorbing uric acid. That would mean to say uric acid excretion is actually affected because of which uric acid level will increase. So what have we seen? Hypoglycemia. Then we had lactic acidemia or lactic acidosis. Third is uric acid increasing causing hyperuricemia. But uric acid increase is not only because of a failure of excretion. Also remember, if glucose 6-phosphatase is deficient, glucose 6-phosphate accumulates. As or no? If glucose 6-phosphate accumulates, then it has to take up another pathway. Once it takes up another pathway, it enters into HMP shunt. For example, in a bigger city, when you have round turners, like flyovers and round turners present, most of the tra traffic might be seen to move above or they'll be traveling on the flyover. But many people will be going through underground mechanisms also. Imagine if suddenly there is a huge rainfall happening for a very short period of time and water accumulates in the downward areas, that is underground, sub areas, subway areas, then almost all the traffic will shift towards above the flyover area. So that would mean to say whenever there is a quick rain or if there is massive rainfall, the traffic increases on the above area Likewise, in case of metabolic pathways, if one pathway is blocked for a while, then the alternative pathway will have extraordinary amount of traffic because gluconeogenesis is failing and glucose 6-phosphate is accumulating, it goes to a detour, it goes into the pathway called as HMP shunt. What do you know about HMP shunt? It is hexose monophosphate pathway or pentose phosphate pathway which is important for synthesizing NADPH and also ribose. Remember, ribose is a base sugar 
Ribose is basic sugar that is important for synthesis of normal bases like adenosine, guanosine, cytosine, thymidine, etc. Now, if you focus on this area, when ribose increases, purine also will increase. When purine breaks down, the breakdown product of purine is also uric acid. So, uric acid again increases because the HMP shunt is actually overflowing with glucose 6-phosphate. So, that would mean to say there are reasons, two in number, for hyperduricemia. One is for the exchange of lactic acid, uric acid has been reabsorbed. Second, uric acid formation has been elevated. Now, the fourth biochemical feature I want you to understand is hypertriglyceridemia. Because gluconeogenesis is not happening, glycolysis will definitely happen, it will move forward. So pyruvate will move towards acetyl-CoA formation, acetyl-CoA goes for carboxylation to become melanyl-CoA. Remember, melanyl-CoA is the beginning of fatty acid synthesis and also melanyl-CoA will inhibit carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1 which is essential for transport of fatty acids into mitochondria for mitochondrial fatty acid oxidation. So because beta oxidation falls, fatty acid breakdown is falling fatty acid increases. So when fatty acid increases, you have to understand hyper fatty acid levels happen in your body. So four major conditions that can be understood in terms of von Jacquet's disease. Remember, if hypoglycemia is persistent, there is a very good chance that the child will have mental retardation. But I am not telling you all hypoglycemic states of von Jacquet's disease can cause mental retardation. I am saying there is a chance that mental retardation can be higher if there is hypoglycemia. What else can you understand from this hypoglycemia? Remember, this is non-ketotic compared to type 3 kinds of GSDs. GSD type 1 is non-ketotic hypoglycemia and if there is persistent hypoglycemia, there is persistent fall or less amount of insulin. When insulin is actually reduced, the anabolic hormone insulin is coming down, then catabolic hormones like glucagon, epinephrine, norepinephrine, corticosteroids will increase because of which muscle breakdown happens and also because of which when the lipids break down, fatty acid levels increase. So catabolism happens the person's body weight is lesser, the child fails to have a normal body weight development. Also, mental and physical retardation might be seen. Thank you very much for watching. Try to remember these features as a part of pediatrics examination and also for biochemical estimations of certain parameters. Have a good day.